From BLC Studios in Mankato, Minnesota, this is the Maverick Hockey Live Podcast, presented by Duncan, with your host, Shane Frederick. This is the Maverick Hockey Live Podcast, brought to you by Duncan. I'm Shane Frederick, the host, and joining me today is Julian Napravnik, MSU forward, and uh, off to a good start this season. Uh, Welcome, Julian. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, I guess first of all, um, you guys had a week off after a, a tough schedule to start the season. You go four and two against uh, some of the best teams in the country. What was your week off like? Was it a, a, a good uh, good rest for you guys, or a nice needed rest, or did you really work hard to uh, improve on you know your your start? Uh, no, it was definitely great to have that week off. I mean, especially, like you said, after that start we had. I think that's one of the, the hardest starts a college team could have. And I think just, yeah, having that break just kind of reset and helped us on getting back to uh, what our details should look like. And um, that's what we worked on over the week off. Um, and now we can't wait. Like, right now that break seemed forever. So we can't, <laughs> can't, can't, can't wait to uh, play again on Friday. I know you've had uh, other experiences where you've had a lot longer uh, start to the season before you've had any breaks. Um, obviously, last year with COVID, you started later in, in, in the year. But um, did the, did you feel like that came at a, at a good time? Uh, you know, six games in, kind of reevaluate uh, how you how you started and, and where things are at. Uh, yeah, I would say so. I mean, um, like you said, the the other times it was a longest stretch of games before we had an off weekend but uh, yeah like I said with that start that we had I think it was a good timing just to see just to figure out where we're at and kind of we, we saw where we at and um, just yeah like you said evaluate from that. You had some in, pretty intense games along the way and I think uh, everybody talked about that St. Cloud State series um, uh, where, where you split with St. Cloud at home um, and how intense that was and how much it felt like it was you know, an end of the year type of uh, series and not a beginning of the year type of series. Can you describe how, what you thought of that weekend and, and even really maybe the level of play for all of these uh, games so far when you, when you bring in UMass and St. Cloud State and, and you go up to the icebreaker and, and you and you play uh, uh, Providence and uh, Michigan, what what that was like uh, just as a player to, to jump into a season like that? Yeah, definitely exciting. I would say the first word. Um Especially with St. Cloud, like we had a, um, a day ended our season last year, and so we kind of had a had something open with them there, and uh, just playing them at the start, like we had a little uh, payback to do, I would mm-hmm. say, and I think we did that good on our first game, just uh, to get that out of the way, just to show them we we beat we can beat you, and I mean in general, like the, the quality that of the teams that we play, like Michigan, they're highly skilled with all the draft picks and everything. St. Cloud, like Providence has a lot of draft picks. Just mm-hmm. quality is was really high. And I'm pretty excited on how we how we did over that stretch. And I think our team is in a in a really good spot to beat those teams. What did you sure. like what did you like best about the way you guys played uh over those first uh three weeks? Uh just playing to our identity. Like um we always pride ourselves in the ground game. Mm-hmm. I think we did that good in a in a mid- majority of a stretch over uh, there. Um, haven't done it a whole game yet, but mm-hmm. um, that's the things that we had to kind of figure out and work on. So um, yeah, just knowing where we're at right now, what we can improve, and where we're gonna be after that. Uh, you're you're you've got a point per game uh, to start the season and a streak that goes back to the NCAA tournament last year. What? Uh, what's going well for you uh, personally, uh, playing wise? Uh, you're you're out there with uh, Nathan Smith and Cade Borchert, right? So yep. I mean that uh, it's been a pr- pretty good, very productive line to start the year. Um, what's what's working for you? Um, just playing the game the right way, I would say. Just sticking to uh, what works. We know what our line can do, and um, we take advantage of that sometimes. And I think just. Yeah, just sticking to our roles and um, competing with each other. I mean, we uh, we built the chemistry in practice every day, so so we can use it in games. And I think that's that's working for us, playing with confidence. And uh, yeah, how do the three of you complement each other out there? Um, just 
tapping each other off the back just whenever we made a play whenever mm -hmm. uh, when something didn't work just like letting each other know like well, where you want to be where you want to get the puck or whatever it is it seemed like uh, there's just been a few plays this year, uh, whether you were finishing or whether uh, Nathan's fin finishing, where you guys really seem to know where each other is on the ice and have that chemistry, uh, just good passes across the way. And, um, you know, that's is that just something that uh, you feel just very comfortable about or how, how has that kind of worked out uh, where you get that feel? Yeah, I would definitely say that we're like comfortable with each other. Because mm -hmm. we do it in practice every day, and just by doing that every every practice, we know like our our routes and everything, so we can kind of anticipate on that and know where we, where we're gonna be for each other. Your your career here at MSU has been rock solid from from the beginning, and and uh, um, you know you you're. You, you came here, uh, maybe you talk a little bit about coming to, to Mankato and choosing to come to Minnesota State to, as, as, a, uh, as a recruited player and um, what that decision was like uh, a few years ago. Um, yeah, I mean, Minnesota State was the first college I ever like really visited. And from the beginning, I was saying, yes, I, I <laughs> probably will end up there because uh, I had to, I was fortunate enough to have Mark and Parker here, which I knew from back home. We played on the same junior team and everywhere. So we kind of stayed in contact over the years and we pretty much took all the same route and they went to college here and I uh, I asked him if like like Mark told me multiple times if I have to do the decision again uh, I would definitely do it so just seeing that a player like Mark went through this program and uh, had his impact just kind of shows me like that's that's the right way to go just to clarify for the listeners, he's referring to Mark Michaelis and yeah. Parker Toomey, who are uh, both uh, natives of Germany, as Julian is also a native of, Ger of Germany. And uh, having that uh, German connection, uh, you know, there's people flying German flags in the in the stands at the <laughs> down at the Civic Center. Yeah. That's kind of fun to see. Uh, and having a couple of seasons there where the, the three of you were playing together. Yeah. No, it's awesome. I mean, not just at home, like they're they're. They come pretty much every away game and right. have those German flags ready. It's it's. <laughs> I mean, it's it's awesome. It's awesome to see that it's. I'm the only one left, so right. it's it's cool that they uh, keep it up that way. Uh, you know, how much uh, did it help having them here just to make you comfortable? Uh, you know, in you know in college, uh, playing college hockey you know, in Mankato. Um, you know, was that was that helpful to you uh, with, in your first year here? Oh, for sure, hundred percent. Especially with the with the language. Like I played juniors in Des Moines for two years. Didn't really do school. Didn't take any classes or anything. So just with the language, various sometimes just helping me out with school and stuff. Like I always, I was able to mm -hmm. to ask him about everything, and they helped me with everything. So that's get a get big credit to them for helping me out that way. Was the language a little bit of a a, a struggle early on here or was yeah, that, is that I'll, something you've adjusted to over time i would definitely say i'd adjusted to it just reflecting back to my first year in the morning that was uh yeah it was a tough year just to kind of figure it out everything and uh yeah no i'm i think i'm getting better every year so. and, and obviously with mark and parker their their english was was very good and parker yeah. parker's uh dad is from minnesota so yep. uh, i think he grew up uh you know with both languages i think and uh <laughs> so a little, maybe a little bit different situation, but uh, and I think I remember even that from your freshman year interviewing you. Uh, yeah. You know, was not, <laughs> the answers were were a little short. I, a little more confident having you on uh, the podcast. Yeah, and for sure. Talking a little bit and I feel more. a little bit more confident too. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that's great. Um, you know, you kind of look back at uh, your freshman year. Did, did it take you a while to to really get comfortable? Did you think um, you, you seem to you know Obviously, you put up uh, good numbers, uh, 20 plus points. I think you've had uh, the first uh, couple of years. Uh, what was, you know, what was that like for you, at least hockey wise? Or was that the easy part as you adjusted to everything else? Uh, no, I wouldn't say <laughs> I, I, I had to adjust playing wise as well. Like coming mm -hmm. in as a freshman, like I had a couple less pounds than I have right now, just uh, stepping in and playing against those guys. And like coach always prays like the way he, he wants us to play, definitely like made me a stronger person just like defending wise mm -hmm. offensive wise just knowing what to do what what will work for me and everything that was the biggest adjustment from freshman year i would say 
what uh, and, and w- to do that, I mean, I think that's something that that really comes across here. Coach Hastings, there certainly seems to be a demand for most players to you know pl- make sure that you're playing a complete game, right, both mm-hmm. ends of the ice, and and, and le- learning that so you can be trusted in really all situations when when needed. What was that something that uh, took some adjusting to as well, or did you kind of you know where do you pride yourself as far as like offensive type of play versus you know, the other uh, areas of the ice? Um, yeah, I mean, I would say it just as an overall player, I've improved just mm-hmm. by playing his type of st- his type of style. I mean, um, just going through practice every single day, like the stuff that we do, like it's it's pretty hard, it's competitive, and uh, it's a great way to make every fu- everybody better. Like just taking that from freshman year, seeing how the senior worked and how their philosophy was like on the ice, off the ice, just seeing how they do things just help me becoming like a better athlete and making a step to the next league mm-hmm. by adjusting to those those parts. Last year, uh, you uh, got the WCHA, I think it was the Offensive Player of the Year or the Forward of the Year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, to, to get an honor like that at the end of a season, and it certainly was a, it was a fun season for you guys and, uh, and certainly a great ending to the year to – and what you guys did in the in the playoffs but what was it like to get an award like that and kind of get that recognition for um for your offensive play i mean that's a that's a great feeling um just knowing that i uh am recognized that way just uh i mean pushes me for sure Mm -hmm. just to be even better this year and just i mean that wasn't wasn't all me like uh, it's it's always a team stuff and Play with Smith and Borchard last year together too, mm-hmm. and um, just with their help, like uh, that is possible. It, it's one of those things when you when you play. You mentioned those guys again, and we mentioned them earlier. But to to kind of go multiple seasons with the same group, um, and you never know when when uh, different game plans are going to force different. Uh, lineups but that consistency over time um you must really appreciate that and playing with those guys oh yeah 100 percent. just uh yeah i mean we're together a lot of times just also outside the rink and you build you build a relationship with the people and uh that will transfer on the ice as well so just by playing together for a couple of years just will have a big impact on how we're gonna play on the ice you know, there's a lot of expectations, I think, on uh, Nathan Smith when he came to MSU and um, and being a draft pick. Uh, Cade Borchert kind of came out of nowhere last year, had, mm-hmm. had a great season. Um, what was it about him that he really made him kind of uh, jump out? Uh, you know, you, you saw it firsthand. You were part of it to, to see him kind of um, burst upon the scene as a, as a top line, top six type of forward last year. Um, I would say I would take uh, coach's words on there, just being an everydayer, I would say that changed, uh, like it changed him as a player. Like I can see it for myself, like just being freshman year and like sometimes going away in practice and like not like being completely there, but going into practice and like literally take it as a, as a game and just go through everything like you would do in a game just makes everybody better. And I think Borchi did did that his second year and he was like he's sticking out in every practice and every game so that definitely helped him there and also i would say you know it's sticking with it through a, a first year where you know the, just that opportunity wasn't quite there and kind of had yeah. a, he had to wait yeah. and uh that, that that's not always easy for 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 players to have to kind of wait and i'm sure and i think it was pretty well documented last year where there was a uh, a game or two where where you weren't playing yep. and uh, I think <laughs> you brought that up a few times I think coach brought that up a few times I think <laughs> I, I think it came up uh, even maybe even during the the playoffs after you've been <laughs> yep. in the lineup for a long time but there's a lot to be learned about those days where you have to you know kind of watch the game from the stands whether it's one game two games or uh, most of a season well 100 percent and uh, I think Coach knows exactly what he's doing there, and uh, <laughs> that is definitely some fuel for people, especially if you're out for a for a longer time. Like you're just sitting up there and like, like I gotta do something. Like I don't want to sit up here anymore. Like that that can't happen. So like, just that taking that as a push to be better and to show up every day. Just uh, yeah. Just. Is it is it inspiring? Um, is it motivating? Is it 
Um, is it areas where you kind of watch the game differently and, and realize where you have to be better? Is it, is it, does it happen in the stands? Does it happen in the, the film study later? What, where, where do you think that the extra oomph comes from when you're, you know, when, when you aren't uh, in the lineup? I think first of all, it's frustration, uh -huh. just uh, being angry, I think. And then um, the motivation kicks in. I think just watching a game from on top as well is, is definitely something that helped me too. just sitting up there, watch the guys play, making me realize like, I want to be on like on the ice sheet for as much as I can. And I don't want to have any, any reason for anybody to scratch me again. Mm -hmm. So like just watching it from upstairs, seeing how the boys like take that game game day experience and all that in because that's like that's a cool feeling to be in the lineup and to play every game just especially in a, on in front of a home crowd so mm -hmm. like just watching that and realizing that uh you don't want to sit up there is uh, <laughs> the main thing you mentioned the home home crowd let's switch gears a little bit uh you know after playing a season i've asked a lot of people this uh it's a pretty uh common early season question on on this podcast but when uh you have a season like last year uh where you had the stands were pretty much empty if maybe they had a couple hundred people in there mm -hmm. um <clears throat> you know to go through that experience have a great season but then go to have that st cloud series with the stands you know 4500 people one night 4800 the next night what was that like? Um, could you did could you really tell uh, that how much you missed it? Uh, yeah, I mean, totally. Like, yeah, we everybody missed that feeling. Like, it's just just hearing it before that uh, the rink is going to be sold out on a game day uh, on a weekend at home. It's just like there's not a better feeling. It gives me goosebumps just to think about uh, playing in front of a packed barn and. Uh, just like also talking to people outside of hockey, like we became friends with and everything, like they are just telling us like how pumped they are to see us play and everything just like shows us that people want to see us, people want to be part of it. And mm -hmm. that's that's a great feeling. Um, yeah, even just uh, myself who attended some games last year uh, as a reporter and being in an empty arena, arena just to, to be back there that first night right. um it, it was almost like a, a a big reunion of sorts people were yeah you know yeah. shaking hands and giving hugs and happy to see people and uh it was quite the atmosphere it was it was a lot of fun for sure you're you're at home that you're back at home this weekend um and uh it starts the conference schedule the the ccha uh schedule for you guys begins i know there's been a few games are already the in conference play um um from other teams um how does that change for you guys um you go into you know you go from playing teams that you're familiar with but you know out of conference and and a couple of them were new you hadn't played umass before or this program hadn't and now you're in a situation where uh, you're, everyone's really familiar and you're playing Northern Michigan who, um, you know, obviously they knocked you out of the, <laughs> the WCHA tournament last year. Um, a lot of players you're familiar with. What's it like going into the conference schedule? How, how, how does that change things? I don't think it changes that much because we're always kind of always worried about ourselves and uh, our type of type of play. But uh, I would definitely say, like like you said, they they kicked us out at the semifinals last year, so um, we got a little, got a, got a little, um, yeah, <laughs> built open with those guys. So um, <laughs> just I don't think anything really changes. Just like we got to prepare for them, just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, we we're a little more familiar, so we can uh, talk a little bit more detail about what they do, what we can do to beat them, and I think that's that's. That's the change. Yeah, and certainly it's not like the schedule gets really, you know, gets easier because you go into conference play. No, I mean, they're, not at they're, all. they're a team that uh, you guys you guys have had some great battles with, and, uh, and then you look ahead at the other games coming up uh, after that. Not that you look want to look too far ahead, but when you you know have Bowling Green and and uh, teams like that, yeah. you, it really uh, you really realize that you know the, the the conference rivalries that are in place, right? Yeah, I, yeah, like like I said, sometimes it's uh, it's harder to play their own conference and outside of conference teams because everybody like is familiar with each other. Just um, yeah, like you said, the battles that we have sometimes with Bowling Green even and Northern Michigan is just. 
uh, something we can uh, look forward to. And as a team that's won, you know, as many championships in a row as you have, uh, there's a big target on on your backs by every, it seems like every team kind of gives you their best effort because they, they want to knock you guys off, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a great feeling for us too, just sure. to take that from it and uh, know that they want to beat us. So we kind of just like just play our game and uh, stick to it. Just, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, anything particular about Northern Michigan that you feel like gives you guys fits or that makes, uh, you know, how, how, how do you feel like you match up against them? Um, it should be a great matchup. I mean, um, their offense is pretty good. They're good, really good off the rush. So we just uh, kind of got to go go with that, just defending the rush, going back to our zone, uh, making sure that nothing comes inside. Um, we always praise ourselves against on the ground, ground game. I think we can expose their D on that a little bit, just playing down low and uh, getting our chances from there. Um, when you, you when you started preparing for them this week, and you certainly don't have to give anything away as far as what you're going to be doing, but do you did you spend a lot of last week working on you know different with uh, skill development? Is it working on some detail things? What you know you, you talk about that off week, uh, and then you go into a regular week where you you game plan a little bit for the the, the team you're playing maybe. Uh, is that is that kind of how you you approach things with with having those two weeks? Um, yeah, that off week uh, was mainly focused on like skill development and um, just getting down and uh, up and down the the ice sheet a little bit, just working on support, working on uh, shooting angles, like all that all that detail work. And now that starting the game week again, just more system oriented and mm -hmm. um, more like. Uh, special teams as well and all that so that changes us a little bit sure you guys would like to you know get your power play going a little better a little uh i i think your your numbers are okay right but it but there was kind of a stretch there where where you hadn't scored a, a power play goal is that is that an area that of focus for you guys yeah definitely focus but uh more on that because uh yeah like you said we haven't had a great start with the power play and i think we we know we can do better. We we've done it last year. Like we've been we've been really good on the power play last year. So we just gotta just just gotta figure it out a little bit. Go go through it and practice and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm pretty optimistic that we'll be we'll be good. How much is that is, is the start of the season? I mean, you're you basically don't have a lot of preseason practice. I mean, and the coaches have limited times. I mean, I'm sure you're working on some special teams, but you're still limited up until the official start day of the season. And the official start day of the season, you're playing the defending national champions, the number one yeah. team in the country. Uh, you're not out there with a full practice. And then suddenly, you know, and then you're playing St. Cloud State and then you're playing the icebreaker. And then you finally get a week off. So is that, do, do you feel like that, it will help you know those special teams areas where you got to focus and and coach Hastings could put a little bit more time into it than uh really that you had up until that point yeah i would i would say that i mean yeah like you said the the hours um were limited so we couldn't really work on that much detail and everything and i think yeah, yeah now he has the time to work with us on specific things which uh w will definitely improve from that from having more time to focus on it yeah it's just it's college hockey is unique that way you know you're just uh yeah. you're thrown right in and I, I, again you, there's plenty of time to do some but it might not be as much as uh, you know it's not a two-week training camp or yes. or whatever that uh, a football team might get where you could spend you know several days in a row and then go on to something else and and then come back to it you're 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 jumping right in and playing in your guys' case, the best teams in the country. Yeah. I mean, the good thing about that is just everybody, every college had the, yeah. the same rules, kind of. That's right. So that made it a little better. But um, yeah, definitely what you're saying with more more time, more hours will be better. Excellent. Well, um, best of luck this weekend against Northern Michigan and uh, the start to the conference schedule. And uh, I'm sure everybody's looking forward to, to seeing you out there. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Well, that's uh, Julian Napravnik, everybody. And I'm Shane Frederick. This has been the Maverick Hockey Live podcast brought to you by Duncan. Make sure that uh, you subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And we'll see you next time.